So if you pay attention to social media at all, I know what you're watching. It's Midnight Mass because it's one of the top 10 shows on Netflix. It's taken everything by storm. Everybody's already upset that it's only a limited series. But I got to tell you, one of the people that I was really keeping an eye on when I was watching it was Dolly because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with her. So how could I not talk to the wonderful Crystal Balint? Crystal, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, Crystal, like I said, you go on social media right now. I mean, it's still trending. Everybody's still talking about the series. Did you all kind of know when you were on the set that you were making something special here? Well, I mean, I, I don't think we necessarily looked at it in the terms of how social media was going to perceive it, but we knew we were a part of something really unique. Um, the show hit a spot for all of us, I think, as a cast, and you've probably seen some of the banter back and forth between us. There's a lot of love in this cast, and we're like family now. You know, we all came together during this really unique time in the world, and we made this thing that was deeply personal to Mike and and became really personal for all of us. So, I mean, we felt it was going to be. We felt that we were making something special, but we had no idea how much it was necessarily going to affect everyone else. And we're just grateful that it is. It definitely is. And actually, I feel like you got a unique perspective too, because for anybody that doesn't know your background, you kind of. You, you grew up in a very small town yourself, much like Crockett is, maybe in a different sense, but it's it's also a very small town. So how much did that experience kind of, did you take with you into this role? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, yeah, like you said, I grew up in a small town that was like less than 5,000 people for most of my upbringing, which is bigger than Crockett, obviously, but those elements are still at play. It doesn't matter what kind of small town, how, you know, a small town is a small town and there's always, there's the Bev Keens and there's, you know, the people who, you know, there are those, those characters that we've brought to life in this show. I also spend part of my time um, on a small island just off the coast of BC with they're also sort of smattered with a bunch of small communities of people so i is as an adult too i have experienced living in small communities and um for sure it, it influenced how i behaved as dolly and how i just sort of interacted with characters there's just a certain kind of there's an essence to people who grow up and live in those types of communities um that both good things and bad things so yeah it was hard not to bring it into it the, th the fact that you can still find a community that small in 2021 is good for you. I don't know how you pulled that off, Crystal, but well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so for anybody that's been watching the series or anybody that's just diving in, Dolly's actually got a very important standing in the community. So do you feel like that's stressful for her or does she really kind of embrace it, you feel like? Um, I think, you know, I think Dolly started off as someone who enjoyed it. I mean, her husband is the mayor. And, you know, I think when you're in a small community like that, and you have any kind of prominence, um, you know, there's some prestige to it to a some extent, although you are still just a community member. I think she has quite a large standing in the church. She's quite she's quite an active member of her church. But because of what happens to the Scarborough family, as it pertains to Lisa and the accident and the things that have happened to their family, um, it changes Dolly. It changes how she perceives herself, how she perceives herself in the community. Uh, I think it's made her smaller. Um, and so it, I don't think she revels in the prominence in the same way that, say, Wade does. Um, I think she, it, it really took the wind out of her sails. And so when we meet Dolly in the show, she's sort of at a low point, which is why the changes that happen in Crockett really affect her in a significant way. Yeah, no doubt about that. I want to play off that a little bit because you talked about her husband being the mayor of the island. He does seem like at times, though, he has blinders on a little bit without spoiling anything. Do you feel like she sees that or is she kind of like stand by your man right in line with him, you think? I think there's some of that for sure. I think Dolly is a dutiful wife. Um, I believe she, you know, cares deeply for her husband and she, you know, respects Wade and respects the position that he has both as a mayor and also as a father and a partner. But I also think that, um, I don't know if necessarily she's blinded also in a lot of the events that take place because they affect her so personally. They so some of, a lot of the events that take place directly affect um, her family, and so it's difficult to it's difficult not to have you know come into it with a bit of tunnel vision because you want to believe and so i think she really does she really goes in kind of whole hog and and wade brings her along with him but but i think she's on board pretty early on yeah i'd say that's about right speaking of believing i mean religion obviously a, a big part and focus of the show just given the title alone 
How interesting was it for you, though, that you all have characters like the Hassan family or even a character like Dr. Gunning and, and, and her and the way she lives her life and things like that to kind of highlight the different aspects of the religious tensions that happen throughout a community like this? Well, I mean, I think that's just a testament to the brilliant writing that Mike, you know, put into the show. You know, as you probably lots of people have read that he's spent so much of his life working on this project, so much of his professional career. So he really created a, a fascinating range of characters to challenge the faith of across the board and challenge people's beliefs. Um, you know, uh, Sarah Gunning is a perfect example of she's someone who she's not really, she's not a villain and she's not a, she's not a savior. She's someone who's just, she's sort of there to help us sort of stay grounded. Um, Hassan is a fantastic character because he represents sort of the outside world to a large extent of like what, you know, how he would perceive, other people might perceive the island. Um, so I think that they're integral to the story. And I think that they're, again, just a testament to the brilliant writing. And I, uh, I loved having those personalities to play off of. And the actors playing them were just like fantastic. They just did such tr tremendous work. Absolutely. We're talking to Crystal Boleyn, who of course plays Dolly on Midnight Mass, which you can see right now streaming on Netflix, all seven episodes. Now, Crystal, you talked about Lisa a little bit, her daughter, going through a lot when we first meet her. We get to learn about that backstory really quickly. So talk about their relationship a bit, hers and Dolly's, and shooting that pivotal moment in episode two. I'm sure you know exactly which one I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, um, the woman, the young woman who plays Lisa and Ara um, Simon, she's just tremendous. And I, she, right away, I was like, okay, this is someone I can work with. And I think the relationship that sort of we have is, again, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Dolly is pretty downtrodden when we meet her. She's so heavily affected by what's happened to Lisa and what's happened to their family. I mean, you don't really get to learn too much about this, but as a backstory and my discussions with Mike, you know, they've they've invested heavily into making sure that Lisa has what she needs to be a functional person after what happens to her. So, you know, you could imagine refitting their whole house and putting ramps in and getting the right things for her and seeing doctors and seeing specialists. So um, as anyone who's ever been through any kind of trauma like that, that affects the entire family, it's it just takes a toll and you do your best to stay positive, but it's really difficult. So when that pivotal change happens in episode two, um, I mean, that moment, I had spent a fair bit of time sort of just like investing in how weighted down Dolly was. And getting to release that in episode two was, that was one of my favorite scenes to film because it just was, for both of us, I think, like it was just such a highlight being able to kind of like it's the first time we see Dolly actually breathe a little deeper and she stands a little straighter after that. And, you know, it starts to feel like herself again. And so it's, um, again, really fantastic writing, but it was just such a fun and, and really cathartic scene to shoot. You hit the nail right on the head and you were really good in that scene too. I thought it really stood out. So it absolutely Thank well you. done on your part. Thank for you. Sure. Another great performance in this series. And I, I'm sure you'll agree. I'm an ap unapologetic Hamish Linkletter fan anyway. But, I mean, Father Paul is a character to me that the second you see him, he just stands right out when we introduce him. So let's go back a little bit, talk about Dolly's first impression of him, but also just how great was it working with Hamish on the show? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, quickly, Dolly, I think right away is um, there's something, everyone feels this, and you see it on, on screen, is that there's something very different about him. The minute he comes in, you know, remember, it's a sleepy little town with a Monsignor who's been there for what feels like forever, who can barely remember the words to his own homilies most days. And so, you know, you get into a rhythm with someone like that, especially in a small community, you know, there's a very heavy reliance on habits. And he was part of that habit. And then you get this new guy who is so refreshing and so different and so approachable and so lovely and right at the gate he leaves this like really terrific impression upon all of us um so that for dolly is is one thing and then that, for me crystal as an actor i mean i wasn't super familiar with hamish's work but when we got together with um the entire cast just before the lockdown actually to do an entire seven episode Chris, like script reading with the whole cast, which was a full day event and a lot of fun. Already back in March, watching him read those homilies and do those scenes, 
I mean, we were all getting goosebumps and that was before he'd had an additional five months with the material and then came and brought it to set. So, I mean, I, I remember coming home from that first cast read and saying to my partner, like, this is, this person is going to blow this show out of the water. I mean, like already we were weeping at the t table read. I mean, we all had moments of that, but his scenes and his homilies and his delivery was already so dialed in at the table read that I just, I couldn't wait. And then of course on set, it was like, it was like being, it was like literally like going to church as an actor. <laughs> like, oh my God, please don't stop talking. And on top of which, he's just such a lovely guy. He's a really tremendous guy and a lot of fun to be around and um, really funny. And um, I learned a lot. Yeah, I learned a lot working with him. I would agree with all those things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you, we've talked about Mike Flanagan a lot. And just in true Mike Flanagan fashion, all hell breaks loose at some point in this series, and which is a lot of fun. But I've seen some other interviews with other cast members saying that, that they kind of didn't know what they were getting into when they signed up for the show. Would you say that that was true of you as well? You're like, you thought it was going to be one thing. And then once you get into it, you're like, whoa, hold on, what, what, huh? Yeah, I mean, when I when I got the, the you know, I'm trying to make brief the story, but like when I got the audition, it was very like cloak and dagger. Like I got this audition and it was like, I think at the time it wasn't called Midnight Mass, it was called something else, like a working title. And the character description was like one sentence or something like that. Like it was very, very vague. And I've read for it. And then like, it was right before the holidays. So then a month later, you know, you get into Christmas and you kind of forget about things. And then, then like a month later, I get a call and saying, you booked this job and I couldn't remember what it was. And then we got the scripts and I remember reading the scripts and going like, oh my God, this is like, this is like a, an enormous thing. And then as we started shooting it and watching the scale that they were bringing to things, I mean, everything from um, SFX to set design to even just like the shot lists were incredible. It was a feature film scale, you know, production. Um, and then, like you said, when things sort of explode in those later episodes, being a part of that, that filming experience, I was like, oh, wow, this is on another level for sure. And I was not expecting that. So one thing that we can expect, and I know you probably can't talk a whole lot about this, is we know that you're going to be joining Mike again for the Midnight Club. Now, I know it's early. It's a project that's, you know, very in the early, early going, but... How much can you talk about that and how nice will it be to actually, you know, kind of work with some of the same faces again? Um, yeah. So, yes, I am going to be in the Midnight Club and um, and I I can talk a little bit about only because I know that it's out there in the in the in the Internet world <laughs> that it's out there to confirm. Um, so, yeah, I'll be joining on that that show for a few episodes and. I was fortunate enough to get on that because Mike invited me back and it, um, it's Again, it's, I mean, it's a different thing than Midnight Mass, obviously, because it's Christopher Pike adaptation. So anyone who knows Christopher Pike's work, which I am familiar with and was so excited to get invited to play with this. Um, but it's, again, really, the, the writing is tremendous. Mike was involved in all of that stuff and the production is really terrific, terrific. The cast on this show is some familiar faces. So I did get to work with some familiar faces from Mass um, and they're all really excellent. I think people are really gonna be blown away by it. The performance in this show too and and yeah it was just a treat to come back and work with Mike and Trevor and the whole team at Intrepid because they're like I said they're like family now so I'm just like chuffed to be able to be a part of it again and if you guys haven't joined the family yet you need to do Midnight Mass streaming right now on Netflix Crystal Belint thank you so much for joining me I appreciate it you're so welcome it was a pleasure to be here thanks for having me